Hi everyone, today I have Rita Murphy from the Catholic University of America here to chat with me and to share a little bit more about the Catholic University. And I'm excited because I just said to Rita that I have not had an opportunity yet to visit uh, the campus and was slated to visit this past spring when we all know what happened in the world. So um, we have a, a little to be, to be visited on my, my list of schools. So um, thank you for being with us. And um, uh, if you wanna just introduce yourself and share a little bit about your, um, your area that you cover, that would be great as well. Yeah, awesome. Um, so my name is Rita Murphy. I'm an admission counselor here at Catholic. Uh, my territories are West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, uh, North Carolina, a couple um, counties in Maryland, and Pennsylvania, sort of minus the Philadelphia area. Um, so if you land anywhere within there, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me. I've got, you know, my contact information at the end of, of this presentation, um, or you can just find uh, all of our general information on our website. Perfect. That's a lot. That's a big territory. You have a lot of lot of space to cover. <laughs> it is a lot of space. <laughs> <laughs> Easier to do virtually, I guess. <laughs> Which has been interesting, you know, scheduling everything because oh, I yeah. could go from North Carolina to Ohio in ten minute time. But <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, you could go ahead and share your screen. Awesome. Great. So to get started today. Um, I'll just sort of start off with, oops, here we go, uh, the history of Catholic University and sort of who we are. So we were founded in 1887 by Pope Leo XIII, and we are the National University of the Catholic Church. Um, we're the second oldest graduate research center here in the U.S., so we were primarily started as a graduate research institution and then began uh, introducing undergraduate in 1904 up until today. Uh, we've got Global Research University, 31 on-campus centers, so that, you know, serves a really great purpose for our undergraduate students to have the chance to get involved in that sort of research if um, that's something that they're looking to do, um, or just sort of be exposed to that higher level of uh, instruction in many fields, not just, you know, traditionally. Um, I know a lot of students will think like biology for research, things like that, um, but there's definitely research going on in so many different uh, subject areas right on campus. Um, so who is here at Catholic? So we've got about 3,300 undergraduate students, 2,600 graduate and law students. 80% um, of our students self-identify as Catholic, uh, and about half that number attend mass on a weekly basis. We are 30% ethnically diverse and 8% international students here on campus. And while we are the Catholic University of America, um, you don't have to be Catholic to apply or attend. Um, we are welcoming to students of all faith backgrounds. But if faith formation is something that you're looking to pursue in your undergraduate uh, experience, there are plenty of opportunities for that um, for both Catholic and non-Catholic students through our campus ministry center. And I have to ask if the photo from the Cherry Blossom Festival. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, so this is right near the Tidal Basin down by the Jefferson Memorial. Um, it's like stereotypical spot if you look up uh, Cherry Blossom Festival that happened back in uh, around March. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't gather in the same numbers right when it hit was around everything, um, but it is really beautiful. They kind of bloom all over DC, so it was really nice to see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so we are a residential campus in DC. Um, we have the largest self-contained campus in Washington with over 176 acres of green space. There is plenty of green space. You get that traditional campus feel, um, which is really great, you know, being in the city, you kind of get best of both worlds there um, with the city right outside of campus, but you still have, you know, those lawns to throw Frisbees around, all those stereotypical ideas, you know, you might have in your head of like a campus environment, um, that all still happens, which is great. Um, you can see in this photo too, that's the uh, Basilica right next to campus. It's not technically uh, part of our campus, but it's, right up next to it. So um, definitely a nice place for students to go to and hang around uh, as well. 98% yeah, of our first year students live on campus um, and we do have a three year residency requirement. Uh, so students um, choose to live off campus senior year. They can choose to live on campus. Um, we have the space for it, but a lot of seniors do choose to move into houses in surrounding neighborhoods. Um, some apartment buildings across the street have a great relationship with campus. Um, they're very new in the past, I think, five years. They've sort of set up 
uh, this whole area right next to campus, Monroe Street Market. Um, so they've got three apartment buildings, our bookstores over there, um, Chipotle, some other local restaurants, nail salon, a couple little like things. Um, there's a arts walk, some art studios down, uh, down the street. They've got a farmer's market. So it's a really nice kind of mini area right off campus, um, still a little separate from you know, downtown. Um, so you've really got your options there. Um, and we do have a new dining hall and residence hall coming in 2022. Um, construction is continuing. We hit a little bit of a snag for a bit of time there. Um, so hopefully around 2022 20, uh, will be complete. Um, so obviously we are in DC. Uh, in that photo, you'll see the Capitol building behind these students. So with that, you know, comes access to everything in DC, the art, culture, music, um, sports teams, which are all seem to be mostly on the rise, which has been really exciting to be around um, as well. Uh, and we do have, you know, that immediate metro access, the train system um, in DC, as well as, you know, just the in internship opportunities for students um, has been really impressive as a, as a staff member to see what's really, um, you know, available to students. There's a lot to do in DC, a lot that you can be exposed to. Um, and I think, you know, our advisors are give a really good, um, you know, help the students out um, finding those and the students are very motivated to do them as well. And on this next slide, you can see, this is the uh, map system, just a quick photo. Um, can you see my mouse when I share my screen? Yeah, I can see it. Oh, awesome. Um, so this is our stop, the Brookland CUA stop. We have our own stop right across from campus. Um, so again, really easy and accessible for students to get all over DC. Um, you can go down to the Smithsonian Museums, which are free, also great for college students. Um, the monuments are down there. You can get to and from campus. If you're um, taking an Amtrak, the red line goes right down to Union Station or maybe a bus. Um, you can also take it right to Ronald Reagan Airport um, and then directly to campus. So um, then you'll see just some, some examples of these internships uh, that students are able to have and they're able to get to them a lot of the time with this metro. So you don't need a car um, or anything like that. Uh, so it really makes it accessible for, for every student. And I'll say I've been in metro systems in a lot of places. And I actually think the DC metro system is one of the easiest actually to navigate, which is, is a, saying something, I think, because it looks totally. complicated here. But it's actually, I think, very pretty easy once you get to do it. Do you do some Definitely. kind of acclimation for new students to teach them how to navigate this when they get to campus? So normally during orientation, they do sort of like a scavenger hunt uh, on the metro system, like throughout DC. Yeah. Um, I, they aren't able to do that this year. They might be doing like sort of a virtual, you know, version. Mm -hmm. um, sure. But def you're definitely right with that. It has been really easy. Um, I've moved down here the past uh, year and a half, and it has been really easy to pick up. Um, having grown up around New York City, mm -hmm. never really catching on to the subway system <laughs> has really been much more simple for me, so definitely. <laughs> awesome. Um, so now looking a little bit at your classroom experience. Um, so you'll receive a dedicated four-year advisor when you uh, come to campus who's cross-trained in both academic and career advising. Um, so they're you know, able to get to know you over your four years, help you pick your classes and your major, um, and then also just getting to know your, you know, possibly post-grad in interests, career uh, goals, and sort of helping you get there. Um, so again, helping look at those possibly internships or research or just helping with cover letters or um, looking at grad schools or anything like that. Um, in the classroom, it's about a seven to one student to faculty ratio, and an average class size is about 19 to 21 students. Um, so definitely that, you know, uh, one-on-one -on -one instruction, getting to know your professors, they get to know you, um, they'll know if you're in class. Uh, there, we've got 400 full-time faculty, 93% of whom hold the highest degree in their field. Um, so not only are you getting that personalized instruction, uh, but you know you're getting that high level of instruction too. Um, and this photo is inside of the uh, architecture building. So very cool building for, for those students. Um, so we do have uh, nine schools of study for undergraduate degrees. Um, I'll sort of touch on, on each one a little bit. 
And as this is sort of a more general um, presentation, if you have more specific questions about the schools, um, you can feel free to interrupt me too. Um, but definitely, I encourage you to go on the school's website um, and really dive into each department and see what the programs um, have to, you know, have to them. But up first, we have the School of Arts and Sciences. Um, this is our largest school um, and home to some of our most popular majors, uh, education, politics, media communication studies, uh, psychology, and natural sciences, um, and students of all majors will be taking classes in this uh, school for our liberal arts core. Um, and if you have a couple different interests sort of that you see in this list, uh, we do have an exploratory uh, option within the School of Arts and Sciences. Um, so that means you uh, wouldn't have to declare your major yet. You do have until second semester sophomore year to do so. Um, so you can come in and take those intro classes, sort of explore your interests um, and see you know, where that might lead you. Next is the Bush School of Business. Um, the, we recently renovated this building. It's beautiful. Back in uh, January of 2019, it was finished um, for both business and non-business students. Uh, it's used a lot on campus. Um, so we have a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Uh, finance, international business, marketing, strategy management operations, as well as a science, uh, Bachelor of Science in Accounting. Um, so similarly to the School of Arts and Sciences, there are a lot of options in here. Um, you might not have had the ability to take business classes in high school, so you might not know what exactly you want to focus on, so you can come in as an exploratory within the business school. Um, so that sort of, you know, gives you the opportunity to get started on those intro business classes um, and get started on that major so that you're on track for that. And then we do have a dual degree in business management and music, uh, Bachelor of Arts degree, which is very specific interest um, that a lot of students will pursue is very interesting uh, track of, of courses for that. School of Architecture and Planning, um, we have a Bachelor of Science in Architecture, City and Regional Planning, Environmental Studies. Um, I will mention the IPAL option you'll see there is the Integrated Path to Architecture Licensure. Um, so that is an accelerated program to getting your um, architecture license. So usually it takes about 13 to 14 years for that process. Um, this takes about seven years um, with that combined program. Um, so definitely worth it for those students who know you know, right away that that's something that they'd like to pursue. Um, and we have Bachelor of Arts in Architectural Studies, as well as a dual degree in Architecture and Civil Engineering, which is a five-year program. Um, and this school is really great with getting, you know, students that hands-on experience really starting right away. Um, you'll get your own studio space and you'll get to know if um, architecture is right for you. So when students are applying, are they applying specifically into that program as an incoming first-year student? Um, yes, I believe so. Okay. Um, yeah, I can double check on that, but I believe that's, um, you know, you start off in that. To the end. Got it. I can check on that. <laughs> uh, next is the School of Engineering. So similarly to School of Architecture, uh, they really get you that hands-on experience in the beginning of freshman year. You get to know if engineering is, is the right, um, you know, area for you. So we've got Bachelor of Science in Biomedical, Civil, Electrical, Environmental, and Mechanical Engineering as well as computer science. Um, so we do have that exploratory option, again, within this school, um, as you, you know, might not have had access to really exploring all these in depth in high school, or just might not know exactly where you want to focus. Um, that's totally uh, a great option for, again, getting started on that engineering track and, and getting those classes under your belt. Next is the Conway School of Nursing. Um, we do offer a Bachelor of Nursing. This is our most competitive uh, program as there is a cap um, to the amount of students that are admitted each year. Um, we have about, I believe it's usually around 90 um, students per year who are in the school. Um, so, you know, these students are studying to be a nurse and are really uh, able to graduate and go right into that field. 90% um, of our students have a first time pass rate in the NCLEX nursing exam um, and they are able to complete over 630 clinical hours during their junior and senior year um, at surrounding hospitals, some really great facilities right by campus. Um, they do get their own Catholic University scrubs. I've seen them coming in and out of the building, so that's you know exciting for them when, when they're able to get that. Um, and we just got a 
recent $20 million donation for program expansion and construction of a new facility, which is so exciting. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to expand that program um, and bring more students uh, into it each year. Next is the Rome School of Music, Drama and Art. Um, so I will mention for a Bachelor of Music programs, we do require an audition. The music school um, requires an audition for that. So if you are interested in any of these programs, uh, you will have to both apply through the Common App to Catholic University, as well as complete an audition. Um, you can find all the information for that. It's, it will be virtual um, on the music department's uh, website. Um, and then for Bachelor of Arts, we've got music, drama, studio art, and art history. Um, if for some reason you do not um, pass the audition for say Bachelor of Music or drama, um, or for Bachelor of Music in, in, in those programs, you can uh, be admitted through Bachelor of Arts degree. Um, and if you can still attend and then re-audition when you get here. Um, so that is an option. Oh, and also, uh, if you'd like to be a part of any of the plays or musicals or music groups, um, you don't have to be a student within the Rome School. So that's important to, to know for students as well. Next is the National Catholic School of Social, Social Service. Um, we have a Bachelor of Social Work and we are one of the top Catholic school of so, schools of social work um, here in the United States. Um, and we also have a five-year Bachelor and Master of Social Work available for students who are looking um, to complete that all, all in one um, program. School of Philosophy and the School of Theology and Religious Studies. Um, you'll be taking a lot of classes in these as well as part of our liberal arts core. Um, majors are also available in those programs, um, and a lot of students choose to pursue either a, ma a minor or double major. Um, by the time they've completed those uh, courses for the core, um, they continue and then get that degree as well. And then we've got pre-professional study tracks. Um, these aren't uh, majors. These are advising tracks. If you're interested in any of these um, sort of postgraduate uh, programs, you'll be able to get an advisor um, in these departments who will be able to tell you, you know, what sort of courses um, you might be wanting to take in order to apply to those programs, what kind of volunteer hours might be necessary. And so they just get you um, to be prepared to be the best candidate um, in the future for those programs. So a lot of parents and students will ask about sort of that transition from high school to college and what, you know, Catholic does to, um, to work with that. So one thing that you'll take part in your freshman year is called first year experience. Um, this will be a program where you'll take one English, two philosophy and one theology classes um, with the same group of 18 students. And this will be called your learning community. Um, and so you'll get to know these students really well. I've heard it compared to sort of a collegiate level homeroom. Um, it's sort of like a nice extended orientation group um, while you're sort of transitioning and getting used to everything else uh, that's new, getting used to a new campus, new city. Um, this will be a nice, you know, constant that you know you'll see these students. Um, so two of those classes will be in that fall semester and two will be in the spring semester. Um, you'll take excursions into downtown DC. So again, using, you know, DC as an extended classroom, um, everything that they've got, uh, you know, down there, they're able to use, um, go on essentially, you know, field trips with their college class. Um, and you'll also receive great faculty and peer mentorship through this program. Um, they're looking to help, you know, transition students both into the Catholic University community as well as the DC community itself. We do have a university honors program. Uh, about 10% of our students are involved um, in the honors program. You're considered for it upon application. So there's no additional um, application to be considered um, for the honors program. Um, they're more intimate seminar style classes. Um, you can kind of think of it as a minor. So it'll be a group of classes that you'll get to choose what's called a discipline of knowledge track um, in a specific sort of theme of classes. Um, and so you'll get to complete that within the honors program from honors um, professors. Uh, and it's, it's just a really great uh, program for those students to be, uh, continue to be challenged. Um, we do have advising on postgraduate scholarships, as well as honors housing, um, special honors trips that are taken throughout the year as well. Um, so that's a you know, great opportunity for them. Students looking to go abroad, we've also got great um, opportunities there, 96 programs over six different continents. Um, it's open to all majors, so that's something that 
um, advisors really like to stress. Um, if you have a strong interest in going abroad, but aren't quite sure if it will fit in with your um, desired course of study, say you've got a double major or um, nursing majors have like a pretty packed schedule once they you know, start getting into clinical hours. So they really work with each student individually. Um, and you know, even our nurses are able to get abroad to the Catholic University in Australia. Um, I believe they're sophomore year. So they really work with each student um, if that's something that they'd like to do and try to find a program that fits for them. And that's an important point too, because a lot of health care majors or programs, it's hard, health sciences is hard to get away. You know, you're not able to Definitely. fit that in. So that's a, that's a very big deal, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and there, I know that there's a special uh, Spanish for healthcare um, certificate that students will um, pursue here as well. And they've taken a couple different trips with, with that specific department, which has been great. Um, experience for them. And you do maintain eligibility for scholarships and financial aid while you're abroad. Um, again, we've got something for everybody. So there's semester, summer, and year-long programs. Um, and then Catholic University does have their own program, um, flagship program in Rome. So we've got our own classrooms um, and professors over there teaching right down the street from the Vatican. So that's, you know, you just take Catholic University and take it abroad with you, <laughs> which is great. Uh, so there's a lot going on uh, around the campus in DC, um, but you don't have to leave campus to find something to do. With over 100 student clubs and organizations, um, there's events happening weekly. You can find flyers, um, you know, Facebook events, Instagram accounts, everything um, is posting, you know, what's going on on campus. Uh, so you could definitely find something that you're interested in and a group of people um, that you'd like to spend time with. Um, also within campus ministry, there's, like I said in the beginning, a lot of opportunity for that faith formation, um, as well as community service. Uh, we do have two big days of service, one in the fall, one in the spring. Um, a lot of our students and faculty get involved in big numbers, um, and all of our student athletes uh, actually take part in that. So that's a really great um, thing that we are able to do in the community. Is there if you're a great life on campus? Um, there, I believe there are a couple academic um, Greek life. Yeah, but not many. Um, and I don't think that they, they don't have like houses or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you're interested in playing a sport on campus, we have uh, division three, uh, 25 varsity teams, 30% of our students are varsity athletes. Um, we've also got club sports and intramural leagues for students who are looking to stay active, um, stay competitive, just not at a varsity level. Um, and we do have two fitness centers. Um, one is right on campus by the resident halls and the other one is just a little ways up the road um, by all of our fields and athletic facilities um, where all the athletes, uh, varsity athletes will practice. So now I'm just getting into a little bit of the application process. So feel, again, feel free to ask, jump in with any questions. Um, so what we require as a part of the application official high school transcript, school report, counselor letter of recommendation, as well as the teacher letter of recommendation. Um, so we only require the one teacher. If a student has an additional you know, music instructor or coach or um, priest or something like that, that they'd like to send in um, additionally, they are welcome to it, but we only require the one academic uh, recommendation. And then, so we are a common application um, exclusive school. So we require the common app along with the essay. Um, and we have our own university statement on the common application. So that's called the Catholic University Statement. And that is optional. Um, I definitely recommend to students to complete that um, if Catholic is of high interest to them. Um, they're also just always really interesting to read. Um, and it's just another opportunity for us to hear um, the applicant's voice and to learn more about them. Um, you know, find out what they'd like to study maybe, why they wanna come here, um, what got their interest here and that sort of thing. And I think I, I agree with you that if something says it's optional, I often tell my students, you know what, it's maybe not so optional. If you really want to go there, you should really do that. So, right. And all, you know, all it can do is help, you know, yeah. um, and there's no like uh, writing requirements. It, it doesn't have to be super long. Um, it, it's just, I don't think it, I don't think that there are even lists like a, a required, you know, amount or minimum or maximum. Um, so however long it takes for you to get your point across. Um, and we don't charge an application fee. And so this year we are a test blind institution. 
Um, so we won't be considering test scores at all as a part of the application process. Is there something, uh, is there something additional that you'll be looking at in, in lieu of those scores? Are you, will something weigh more heavily? Do you, do you know that yet? Or have you guys? That's a great question. So we've actually been test optional um, for the past few years. So it's been a little bit easier of a transition than a couple of the other colleges that are um, yeah. having to quickly kind of change that. Um, so we've really been heavily relying on that GPA. Um, and so I'll get a little into that. So we recalculate the GPA onto a 4.0 scale. Um, so we take out the weight of the honors, IB, AP classes, uh, so that we're able to see you know, what grades were actually attained in those courses. And then all of that gets refactored in. So don't worry for all students, you know, listening, all those challenges that you took get refactored in when we look at what's called strength of curriculum. Um, so we're able to come up with um, sort of a judgment of what's offered at your school, what you were able to take advantage of. Um, so that goes per school per student. Um, so we're able to see like that level of challenge and sort of combined with those, um, those two items is, has been a really good indicator of the students' um, success in the classroom. Um, so I think that that's been what we've heavily been looking at um, for a while now. So it's gonna be an easier transition. Um, and so some people will ask about merit awards. I know usually test scores are very important for those. Um, and you know, same thing with that. Before all a test score would do is help, you know, obviously if pe people were sending it in, it was optional. So it was um, usually helping, you know, boost them, of course, but um, we were still heavily looking at that GPA and that um, strength of curriculum grade. So that's going to be um, the same sort of process. Um, does that sort of make sense? Oh, there? Yep. Awesome. Absolutely. Great. Um, and so again, you know, so we're going to be looking at your GPA and your academic progress throughout high school. But we're also looking to get to know you through your application. So including, you know, all of your activities, any service, leadership, interests, um, all of that within, you know, your common application, your interest in Catholic University, which, you know, you can show in that Catholic University statement. Um, and then we do offer interviews, which are optional, um, and these actually are optional. Um, I do, you know, recommend it if it's something that you want to do and you can kind of ask some final questions, learn more about Catholic, or um, if there's something that you'd like to speak to a little more in your application that maybe might not come across um, over the paper that well, or just, you know, you just want to do something extra. Um, we're doing these all over, um, online this year. So it's definitely more accessible for students. So I definitely recommend looking into it. Um, you can also interview with your specific counselor, um, which wasn't, wasn't always the case. It was usually, um, you know, whoever was on campus when you could visit and we might have been traveling. So um, that's going to be great because then it's just face to a name. You know, again, all it can do is, is help you out. And then the review process, then do you get to review by territory are you reviewing students from your own territory so you, okay yeah yeah exactly so then you know if you're getting to know them then you can right. if you'll recognize it it all just kind of fits to be, together a little bit better yeah absolutely yeah um, so this is just a look at our timeline um, August 1st the common application became available our first deadline comes up on November 1st for early action early decision one um, so early action is that non-binding program you could be applying to, um, you know, multiple schools, um, but you'll be able to get that decision a little bit earlier. And early decision one, if Catholic has become, you know, your number one choice, um, that's a binding program. If you're admitted, then you'll be coming to Catholic. Um, so just something to consider um, as you're making sort of the decision between the two. Um, we say January 1st decisions are released. Usually it's a little bit more around Christmas, um, end of December. Um, if, you know, we want to have a Christmas break, we definitely get those out uh, in time for us to leave. So, you know, you'll be getting it a little bit earlier. Um, and you are, you do get notified about any merit or if you've been invited into the honors program um, when you get that decision. And again, both of those two items, there's no additional application, um, both for merit and honors program, you are automatically considered um, as an applicant. And then January 15th is our second round of deadlines. Early decision two works the same as early decision one, the binding program, and then regular decision works the same as early action. Um, so some students will choose to apply to this later date. Um, 
whether they want to take more time on their application or if they'd like for us to see that first semester um, of, of work senior year. So um, totally fine to do that as well. And then you hear back about that later on in March, as well as um, financial aid and all of that. And then May 1st is the enrollment deadline. Um, we pushed it back to June 1st this past year, so hopefully we'll be back uh, on track for May 1st um, decision day again. <laughs> And then again, um, we've touched on merit awards just a little bit, um, ranging from seventeen dollars to $30,000 um, is for merit awards. We do have a full tuition scholarship, the Archdiocesan Scholarship. Um, there's no application for this, so you do get considered for this um, just by applying. Again, we are looking at all applicants for this. Um, it's for some of our highest achieving students in the applicant pool, so very competitive. Um, but those students will be invited to interview on campus um, hopefully, and, and then they'll interview in front of faculty and at that point be um, uh, invited into that. And then two things I'll draw your attention to, parish scholarship and legacy grant. Um, these are asked about on the common application and we can't go back in and change them later. Um, so just make a mental note of this. Uh, for the parish scholarship, if you attend a Catholic church, um, you're eligible for that $4,000 a year. And the legacy grant is um, $1,000 a year if you've had a parent, sibling, or grandparent um, attend Catholic University. And then lastly, um, we do offer financial assistance. So we require the FAFSA and the CSS profile um, for full review. And 95% of our students are able to receive um, some sort of financial aid or assistance in the form of need-based grants, student loans, um, or work study. Um, and so you can see these students sitting, um, this is outside the PRIS building, the student center. Um, they've got these really great outdoor seating. Um, it really does stay warmer in DC longer. Um, I grew up in the Northeast, so it was, it was a nice adjustment that um, you can have this outdoor seating for that first semester and they're able to use it for a lot of the time, which is cool. That is nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is just some of my information. Um, again, you can feel free to sign up for an interview with your specific counselor. Um, they'll be available up until, I believe, beginning of November. Um, and you can also feel free to take a virtual tour um, if you're not able to get to campus right now. Um, it's a pr pretty in-depth virtual tour um, that you get a good idea of campus. But um, we are offering on-campus visits right now. So if that's something um, down the line that you're uh, looking to do, we are offering that. For the interviews, do they have to have applied to sit for to do the interview, or can they do it before their application has been submitted? They can do it beforehand. Okay. Yeah. And then one final question I have is is just related to current times. Is how um, right now are you back on campus? Are students back? So we have our freshmen um, on campus and mm -hmm. some transfer students or students who had um, outstanding situations. Um, so we were able to welcome all the freshmen move in last week, um, which was nice to see, you know, it was just yeah. things continuing on. Um, so it's virtual instruction. Um, so right now they're on campus and they are taking it all online. Um, we are working on, you know, they've developed uh, a way for them to pick up their meal plans. They pick up from, from, uh, the cafeteria and that sort of thing. And so, um, so far, you know, you're seeing, a lot of great, just great spirit from the students. You know, they're, they're just going with the flow. They're doing what they need to do. They're moving in small groups. They're sitting far away from each other. So it's going well so far. So it's, it's definitely nice to see. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a little tough seeing a little bit quieter of a move-in. You know, normally you've got the orientation leaders flying around campus, but they were still definitely just as motivated, just with a mask on. Good. Well, fingers crossed that for this class that's coming up, that their their move in time next year looks a little bit more normal, and yeah, you know no. things are back to normal. But it's good that to hear that you guys are doing things and and doing things responsibly and getting kids back. And um, well, I appreciate you taking the time to share more about Catholic. The, the pictures are beautiful. The, I, now it just makes me even more disappointed that I didn't get to come uh, yeah, in the soon, spring. Yeah. <laughs> so I will be, yeah, I will definitely be be on campus soon. And um, I actually, and I do really love that the students can reach out and connect with their admission counselors 
one on one. I think that's so important. I think for uh, you know the folks on the admission side to really get to know students, and because it feels like to me a place like Catholic is really so community focused in terms of the campus community that getting an opportunity to meet a student and really get to know them, you would get a sense of whether or not that community is right for them. So I think that that's really important. But if anyone has any questions, be sure to reach out um, to the folks at Catholic. You can schedule um, your interviews and, and check out any kind of virtual tour opportunities or schedule the in-person, um, you know, whenever you're comfortable doing that. Um, but thank you, Rita, for spending the time with me. I really appreciate it. I loved hearing more about everything. So, and you stay healthy and safe too. Thank you, you too. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks.